Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and you saw us uh, sex some rattlesnakes and bring them home from the shop. We're going to show you those setups here in just a little while, probably not this video, maybe next one. And we're going to talk about our plans with all these rattlesnakes and some of the pairings I intend to do. But first, we have to figure out what we already have in our collection, because before I can make plans and draw that up for y'all, well, I kind of got to know what I have. And truth be told, I don't. When we started getting into these westerns, it was more about getting the animals that I wanted and less about worrying about what I wanted to breed. So this animal here, now it happens to be in shed, so normally I wouldn't try to tube one in shed, but uh, since we have the stuff here to sex it today and double check what we think, we wanted to go ahead and tube it and get that done. So it doesn't look its best, but this is a hyper melanistic western diamond back, meaning there's a lot more black coloration on it. And it really wants to back out of this tube on me. Uh, looking at his tail, I believe this one's going to be, and again, I'm seeing one, two, about three. I'm thinking this one might be a female for us, which would be really awesome. As far as other genetics, in it, I don't know of any. I just know it's hypermelanistic. But rattlesnakes are often kind of like people bring corn pythons. Most of the genetics in these are going to be recessive. There are some that are not necessarily, but many of them are going to be. Meaning it's not uncommon in the captive trade that if you have a visual, that it may be carrying a few recessives that are het as well. So we know it to be a hypermelanistic. We're going to treat it like a hypermelanistic. Uh, I do have a male, one that I do, I do know what some of my sexes are, uh, that I can use for this if it's female, that I know would work towards creating hypermelanistic. Uh, that male would be a lavender albino, het hypermelanistic, het caramel. Caramel in these, meaning caramel albino, is not like caramel in ball pythons. For those of you who heard me just talk about not wanting to deal with caramel, and here, you can. It's not a problem. You can do it all day long. It won't hurt anything. Uh, and again, this one's got a nice long rattle. It has. We do give them, so we give them some stuff in their cage. We give them some things to, to, to rub on, to help get skin off, some, you know, trees, some, like, um, antlers, things like that. So we don't typically always have perfect rattles because they'll bang them. They'll bust them up. And there's no feeling here. This is just empty, uh, like your fingernails. So then breaking a piece doesn't hurt it. We don't always get that super nice long rattle to a point. But as you can see, <laughs> snake's done pretty well. Uh, we're going to hope it's a girl. And the next thing to do is we're going to go ahead and probe this thing. Whoa, girly. So we'll flip her hard to the side and let you see her belly. These things just, they produce way more melanin than they normally would. So you get that nice dark colored look. I'm just a baby. It's kind of cool right there. That's where she was, a, that's her scar from being attached in the... Uh, egg sack mm, oh that's a dude oh, bad news that's a, definitely a dude it's a boy so we went about <laughs> there's a sperm club <laughs> so not only is it a boy this is a well-endowed boy it's a very well-endowed boy so this is a male so what does that mean for my plans it means i could use it to push hypermelanism on everything are you playing with some guy. stooge i figured i'd clean it out for him you know a little smegma <laughs> Look at that. Uh, so he is definitely a male. And that goes to show you that, well, that tail is a pretty good indicator. Well, these are hard because you get the rings before they turn white. So that could be what's causing me to be off on that one. It's not completely a guaranteed marker. Unless in this case you count the black ones, and then there are four. Like the thicker banded. Could be. Because there's the thicker banded. Ow! Would you quit hurting there's my hand? One, two, three, four. All right, so we're going to go get the next one. And we will be right back. The next one that was already at our house that we need to sex, because we do know the sex of a lot of them, is this one here. <laughs> and this is one I've had since it was just a little baby. It always has some retained shed issues. This snake is always a fight. I don't know if that's just part of the combination. You don't have to keep these things very humid. We keep him more humid to try to help that. I've had to pull a spectacle. You've seen him on camera a thousand times, me pulling a retained spectacle off and doing different things. This is what's called a purple haze. And so what this snake is, is this is a, so obviously bred in captivity. You can see it's got some purplish color to it. There's a lot more of that when they're babies. This is a hypermelanistic caramel albino. This one is also het for lavender albino. One of my big males is actually its father. So uh, I do know that. I want you going that far in the tube, little buddy. Now I'm going to guess this one's a male. And you can really see the white lines in this a lot better than you can there. You got one, two, you know, three, what would it be, four, and five. This is probably going to be a boy. I would love to be proven wrong on this. That would be wonderful because if this is a female, there's so many cool things I can do with her. Uh, if it's a boy, then 
I still have some use. I mean, obviously it would be a great breeder as far as the genes in it go, and I have some places I'd stick this to. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to run a probe into it. Turn it which way? This way? This way? Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Just like we predicted. That's a male, no doubt about it. Uh, yep. So, that gives us our hypermelanistic that was at home. And then this one, this one I kind of thought was a male anyway. I mean, just by looking at it. And the hyper, I know we got it, they said it was a boy. But I don't know if they actually sexed it or if they just, hey, I got this boy here kind of thing. Because it wasn't part of a breed project when we got it. I really like this snake other than the shed issues with it. Um which it's had for its entirety of its life. We fought and fought and fought and fought with it. So uh, it's probably been two more frequently than any other rattlesnake I've ever had. I know, buddy. And that's whose skin you see in here is probably this one from doing that sort of thing. So uh, before we go into our next video and we start to show you guys our plans for breeding rattlesnakes that we're going to have, Kurt, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, so what do you have to do to get it into the tube you just ask it nicely or what's your process i tickle it under the chin and if you tickle it just right it will run into the tube for you so there's a lot of different ways people do this uh, and what we'll do is we're also going to sex our red babies here in a little while so for patreon i will film trying to get a baby in a tube which will be a total complete shit show because I've never really had the two babies. But we're going to figure it out, and you guys are going to get to see it. So I already do it on Patreon. So if I'm terrible at it, you'll see how I get these guys in tubes. It's pretty simple. I like trash cans a lot. So back here is my big trash can with a weight in it. It's just got a rock to keep it from flipping over. I tend to put them in there, and I try to get them to crawl into the tube. A little bit of touch trying to get them to kind of help me out. Uh, sometimes it helps to tilt the trash can a little bit. Just make sure it doesn't dump over on you. And you get them in there. You can get the tube down and then make sure they're where you want. Make sure they're in there good. And then you can reach down. And you, when you grab them in a tube, I like to grab my hand partially on the snake. Those two fingers should fill the snake. These two fingers should fill the tube. My thumb is kind of uh, usually on the snake on both. So I can feel what the snake is doing. And I'm holding the tube in it. And I'm trying to control how deep in the tube it is depending on how far I want. Sometimes if I'm working on the face of the snake, I'm going to want that snake to be able to get his head out of the tube where I can work. But I don't want it to have enough room out of that tube to like, uh, I don't want to crawl through. If I was going to work on the face of the snake here today, come on buddy. Again, good tube selection makes a difference, right? This is a great tube selection. That thing can actually crawl through that tube right there. I pin that thing down right there. Now, sometimes you got to let it come out a little further. And that's just because of the fact that uh, it can pull back in there. If I was tired for me, like right here, I'm in no danger. You know, I could actually do a little work on there. We may actually do that on Patreon. And it can't bite me right here. Okay, it can't do it. I'm safe. I can go. Woo -doo, woo -doo, woo -doo, woo -doo, woo -doo. And about the farthest it's going to come out of that tube is about that far. So I am good to go. Now, if you have more snake out, gotta be more careful. But these tubes, if you're going to keep venomous snakes and you don't have a set of these, guys, you're doing it wrong. You're just doing it wrong. Kurt, any other questions? No. Nope. Alright guys, thanks for watching. That's what we'll try to do. We'll try to get his spectacle off on Patreon. Alright guys, we'll catch you next time.